Craig Adams here from Wedding Film School and today I've got five questions for our Q&A. And if you want your question answered in future episodes, leave it in the comment section below and we'll check it out. Our first question is asking about switching cameras and it's pretty much should I wait for the new Canon camera or try the Sony a7S line? And this is always you know, the big question, what should my next camera be and when should I pull that trigger to make the purchase? And you know, we grew up with the Canon 5D line, the DSLRs that kind of changed the game as far as video. The 5D Mark II was awesome, the 5D Mark III was a great improvement and we've kind of been using that for the last two years as far as you know, the industry as a whole. Canon has been killing it. And since the C100 and the C100 Mark II, you know, their C100 line, their C series has been pretty good, but it hasn't, you know, it's gotten bigger, it's gotten like, you know, more buttons and doonads and doohickeys. Um, but with the A7S, I, I made the switch to that because of its size, its ease, and its quality. And it's giving me everything that I kind of wanted with the 5D Mark III. You know, a lot of us are waiting for the next 5D Mark IV or whatever they're calling it, the 5DX. Um, I'm not sure if it's been announced yet, but we've been waiting for a while, you know, and I was just tired of waiting. Uh, people make a big deal out of it, but honestly, I don't think it's that hard to switch cameras like from Sony to Canon or Nikon or Panasonic or Blackmagic. Um, you know, it takes some time to sell your gear or buy new gear or figure out what the best situation is as far as, you know, collection of gear. Uh, what do I use with this, with that, with this lens? Um, so, you know, I recommend kind of waiting a little bit. Don't make impulse buys, you know, it'll help out in the end. Should I use different cameras or even camera brands on the same wedding shoot? So this question is asking about like mixing a 5D Mark III with an A7S, which I've done before. And you can see uh, this video that I've got a link for, I shot with an A7S and a 5D Mark III and a 60. So the mix between those three are pretty evident in this. Um, I had to do a lot more post in, you know, work in post with the A7S footage. Um, but honestly, you can change the profiles to kind of match each other. Um, but every single wedding that I've shot with the same camera, so if I had a wedding with three 6Ds, uh, it's just so much easier. It's much, you know, much easier to shoot and to edit uh, just because you know exactly, you, you have the expectations of what things are gonna look like and they match perfectly. Um, you know, and that's just communication on the day of, but it is possible to match the cameras, but I, I absolutely try to have the exact camera, you know, multiples of that or, you know, the same brand at least. Why don't you use Magic Lantern firmware anymore? Uh, so I had, you know, I was a big Magic Lantern user. I had a couple tutorials on how to install and, you know, pushing the limits as far as what you could do and use Magic Lantern 4 with the Canon DSLRs, but I've had probably two or three situations where I've actually lost footage because of Magic Lantern. It like messed up the camera. So sometimes when you're shooting with Magic Lantern, not even raw, just standard, just using their, you know, the features on the screen and like the digital punch in, the magic zoom or whatever they call it, and like the crop marks and the auto record, auto re record, um, you know, it still messed up my camera. So I was shooting, I probably had like four gigs of footage, and then uh, you take the camera out or the, the memory card out and you put it back in for some reason and it just won't read any of the clips. Like just something weird happened. And I tried to save the footage and I couldn't and it was just lost. And the, this is definitely something that Magic Lantern did to the card and I've had it happen, you know, like I said, two or three times and it's just terrible, it's not worth it. So the good news is that with the A7S, another reason why I kind of upgraded to it is because it kind of has all the features that Magic Lantern gave the Canon DSLRs. And that's also one of the downsides about like Canon, like they don't have the features that I'm looking for, which is the ability to punch in digitally to check my focus while I'm recording, uh, the, adil of the ability to have crop marks on the screen. Um, all of these things Magic Lantern gave the 5D Mark III, uh, so the A7S wins. What equipment are you going to buy next? So I use Amazon a lot. So I switch between Amazon and B&H. You know, Amaz if I can get most of my stuff on Amazon, that's how I do it. Just because the Amazon Prime two-day shipping is awesome and it's just so easy. I love their app. 
So I've got a cart that I save items for later. I know some people do wish lists, wish lists but <laughs> wish lists. A Canon a G7X pre-ordered in my cart. I've got the DJ, DJ, <laughs> DJ Phantom 4 pre-ordered. Um, I've also got a Manfrotto head. And if you want a full list of like my current purchases of what I'm looking to buy next, you can check the link in the description below. And lastly, how do you transcode media during a same day edit wedding? So it is a bit different than just a standard wedding where I would import and back up and, and transcode media like the day or a couple days after the wedding. Um, so on the day of a same day edit, if you don't know, you have to shoot, edit, and show a same day edit wedding film that day. So, you know, before, hopefully before, but definitely after the ceremony, you're ingesting cards, importing it into Final Cut. And what I do specifically is I use this computer. I keep everything mobile with this MacBook Pro. So I'll take the cards from each camera, I'll put it in, and then with Final Cut X, I will import directly. I won't put it on my computer. I'll import it directly to the Final Cut X library project folder. And then I will, of course, import the actual raw footage, the H.264 from the camera, and then I'll also make proxy. Uh, so I found that with this speed of this computer and then the time that is allotted, it definitely makes sense to make the proxy uh, optimized ProRes files for doing the same day edit. I'll do that for all of the footage except for the ceremony. So, um, you know, so all the little clips throughout the day will be optimized, but the ceremony will just be raw from the camera. And when I say raw, it's not like raw, it's like just straight from the camera without no, without doing anything. Um, and then, yeah, that's good. You know, I, I take care of that, it's pretty good. You just have to keep organized as far as knowing what clips came from what camera, that will help you for sure. So that'll do it for episode 20 of the Q&A for Wedding Film School. If you've got a question that you'd like answered in the next episode, leave it in the comment section below. We'll take a look at it and get it answered either on the show or just within typed. But uh, thank you for watching. See you.